All right, welcome back to the Roman Troll to Experience Radio Show. Our guest is here. He is a father, a man of God, a husband, a author, a pastor, a speaker. So he does a lot. <laughs> so so uh, um, it's an honor for him to be here on this Father's Day weekend. Um, so um, let's give it up for Mr. Maurice Bowser. How you doing, sir? Amen. Yes. Thanks for having me. Yes. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. Yes, first of all, like I said, happy Father's Day to you. I know, you know, so, yeah, I know you got not playing tomorrow, so, <laughs> oh, you're right here, so, this should be, we, we as men should be celebrated and appreciated, so, yes. you know, so, um, can you tell us, uh, I pretty much give you a note synopsis of who you are, but can you tell us who is Maurice Bowser? Yeah, man, uh, Maurice Bowser, so many people, um, <laughs> pastor, uh, my husband, I'm a husband, uh, father, uh, Pastor Release Church. Um, just started. I just, I just started um, writing. I just started writing. This writing journey is new to me, um, which I'm really, uh, really falling in love with. Didn't think I would ever be uh, that part. Um, added to the uh, gifts and arsenal uh, that God has uh, placed upon me. But other than that, man, I'm a friend. I'm a brother. Um, I am a, a businessman. I have a trucking company. I, 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 I do a lot of stuff, man. I'm busy. I'm <laughs> yeah. busy. I'm busy. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, what was what, what was what, who, who was where we was growing up? Oh man, a delinquent, mm. uh, <laughs> a knucklehead. Um, uh, football, football helped me a lot for a lot of things, um, but streets man. Mm. and just running the streets um, the, the usual young black male uh, with the wrong idea um, the wrong mindset and mentality about life and purpose for life um, the wrong idea about women mm. the wrong idea about a whole lot of stuff man the streets lie to me Mm. The streets is lying to everyone. Um, they say the streets is real, but it ain't real at all. Um, so through all of that, you know what I mean? Lost a scholarship, lost a football scholarship because um, of street life. Um, mm. if, you know, caught a drug case and all these things and uh, weapons charges. Yeah, got a journey, brother. Uh, yeah. So, so, so wait, where did you, where, where, you grow up? I grew up. I grew up, man. Sorry, so. It's interesting. So my grandmother lived in in Mount Airy, up, uptown, basically. Uh, my mother lived in um, the Alley section, and uh, my family lived in Southwest. Okay. So it was honestly, I, I just had friends, just and kind of like the way we were raised. We can, you know, sometimes we were there, sometimes we were there, sometimes we were down here. I went to school up up here and then over there, so I had friends everywhere, so I was just in a little bit of everything, just mm. a little bit of here, a little bit there, a little, a little bit down here, a little, a little bit in Southwest, a little bit in Uptown, in West Oak Lane, a little bit over in the Alley, Logan, and all that mm. section, so, you know what I mean, it was, I was, I was into a lot of stuff, mm. you know, so, yeah. So, you, so you say you grew up playing football, you lost a scholarship, what yeah. was, what was that like, you lost a scholarship, like what? Yeah. First person ever in my family to go to college. Mm. Um, so, you know, um, I love football, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, high school, we won a championship, went to Germantown High School, mm -hmm. went to school, um, as a walk-on, went to walk-on, earned a scholarship, and, uh, court gun car, gun case, and mm -hmm. drugs, and, um, it was over and done with. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, you know. Fell fat on my face. Um, did, I, I didn't do too much time. I did. Uh, they did it like three, four months, mm. and then I had to do uh, because of the situation. My lawyer and all that. It got me to be on house arrest. And I was on house arrest for a little bit. Um, but all of that leading up to you know it it, it. it changed my life. It changed my life for the better. Mm. You know, it changed my life. For yeah, so you said you lost your scholarship, you uh, was in jail, house arrest, but it changed your life. Changed so, so how did how that moment propel you to where you are right now? So, it's interesting. So, 
so I court the case and um, I uh, I get out I get out on bail I'm out you know what I mean and it was it was uh, I don't know if you guys would ever remember I, I'm sure my age here a little bit but it was uh, what's this? it was the spring break it was like the um, it was like the black spring break it was like up in the, like in Virginia. Oh, 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 okay. I know what it's called. You know, I, I know what it's, it's called, called, but I can't think of the name. I can't think of the name right now, right? So I was on my way down uh, to go down there. My boy, we was all going to shoot down there and go down for the weekend. So um, I ended up stopping by my grandmother's house. I wanted to, I wanted to you know, I said, I didn't see my grandmother. And I said, you go see my grandma, my grandfather. So I go down my grandmother's house, and when you come in my grandmother's door, it was like, um, and it was like the living room was the dining room. She had this long table, and she was sitting at the head of the table. And I'm talking about, man, she's sitting there, and I'm like, what's up, Grandma? What you doing? And she just looked at me, and she just kept looking at me, and she was, and she looked at me, and she said, well, "When are you gonna turn your life around?" Mm. And I'm listening to her, and I'm like, "What you mean?" Like, you got this case going on. You got this going on. Then you're gonna give your life to God. So, and we sat there and we talked and she was giving me some scriptures and next thing you know we was praying and next thing I know, man, I was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost on that same day. Mm. Like you know what I mean? Um, I mean I had long hair, man, went to the barbershop, man, cut my hair, you know, it just it just changed my life. Like, um, not in the natural, so to speak, but he had a natural too, but more so in the, in, in, in the spiritual, um, it changed my life. Now, I would like to say that I was from that point on that I was the tip top perfect Christian. I was not. But right, right, right. right. It, that's when my foundation with God, um, I can say, really started. Um, really started at that point in my life, man. When, when I was just facing so much and I was losing so much. Um, that's when he kind of called me, called me, called me home, if you will. Mm. Okay. So it, 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 it just it started with, uh, by you just visiting your grandma's house in this random day. You ran random day. You know. Nothing like planned. Just I was just riding through the city. I said, "Let me stop by grandma's house." You know, they, she always got something to eat or something. And lo and behold, you know what I mean? The Lord was waiting on me. Mm. You know, so. Yeah, it's funny. It's amazing how that works. Yeah, back on that. I haven't felt back on that in a long time. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so what? So it's after you got saved, you got saved and found God in your life. Yes. So, what happened next? What happened? Like, like how did you get the, the church and you became a pastor? And how did you? Uh, like, 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 bro. Um, so I get saved. Um, turn my life around. Stop doing. I mean, I was. I'm cold turkey. When I'm when I'm with God, I'm with God. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hot or cold. You feel me? I don't play around. With, I don't, I just, I'm just I've never been a lukewarm Christian. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying my way is the right way. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Right. For no, for, don't make no mistakes. But I was hot or cold. So, um, so I was hot for God at this time, man. And uh, I caught another case. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> we were in. Um, I don't know if y'all remember National Liquidators on Ad. Yes, Ad. yes. <laughs> so uh, my cousin was in there. We he went to board. He bought a table, mm -hmm. and we were bringing the table out. We were like, "Yo, man, I think you picked up the wrong one. It's kind of shattered." So before we leave the store, we were trying to re like, "Yo, this table is shattered." Mm -hmm. So it was this um, security guard. He was just very irate, very mean, very racist, um, and it just was just getting all in our face and all this other stuff, right? So we didn't understand what was going on. We didn't even know, I didn't even know he was even a security guard. He was right, the right, right, right. So he comes, he was, him and my cousin was getting into it. So he walked away and he comes back charging after us. Dude, I lied to you not. As he was charging, all I did was just push, like just go like that while he was coming at and he fell all out on the ground like like we was like I tried to kill him. And long story short, so they got up, we changed the table, so he was walking out. And as we was walking out, the cop 
now say, well, look, we gotta lock you up because you know the guy that you push, he was a um, he's a police officer. Mm. He's off duty police officer. I said, you gotta be kidding. I said, for what? So we had all these people that was out for it. That's a lot. He didn't do anything. So I get locked up. This is Saturday night, and you know. You get locked up on Saturday night. You come back Monday. You ain't get out on Monday. Dude, I got ROR the next, like, probably, like, five hours late. They was trying to say, because I had open cases already, they was trying to send me to D.C. Mm. So I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. So for some reason, the guy opened up the door, I got R release. I, they, they released me. Um, I still had the case, but I had to go to court. So I called my lawyer, I said, hold on, I Kathleen Martin, <laughs> come on, look, look, Kathleen, I don't, look, what's, you know, what we going to do? Um, long story short, we go to court, he didn't know they had cameras. They seen the video, the judge seen the video, and they said, he looked at the cop and said, are you kidding me? <coughs> wow. Are you kidding me? Like, I really barely didn't even touch him, seriously. All I did was just put my hand out to brace myself. Mm -hmm. And you see him fake throwing forms on the floor, right? So the judge was like, are you kidding me? He was like, what he looked at him and said, what do you want to do? You really want to go forth with this? And the guy said, hey, the guy looked, he said, no, I was just taking an apology. And the judge looked at me, I said, sorry, officer, will never happen again. Case dismissed. Wow. So, I know it's a long story. Case dismissed. So we get there and, um, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, beat that. Uh, didn't beat the other case. Finished that. Uh, new guy had a call on my life. Didn't know how God was going to move on my life. Um, from there, uh, started evangelizing. Became an evangelist. Mm -hmm. um, that was totally unexpected. Um, but then I, I just had this urge that God was calling me to do something greater. But I didn't think pastoring was it. Right. You, you know, um, I didn't think I was worthy enough to be a pastor. I didn't think I was deserving of it. You know, at that particular time in life, I thought uh, being, I mean, obviously I was very mature, uh, immature in my faith. I was immature in spirituality things. Um, so I thought um, that call had to be more so earned mm. than, um, you know what I mean, than, you know, for it to just be gifted upon me. Um, so yeah, so to that point, I was just like, I, I felt God nudging on me for years and years and years, and I ignored it. And I wasn't saying that He was calling me to pastor, you know, immediately, but you know, I felt that pull to pastor, but I didn't, I kept looking at myself and not looking to God, right? And um, for years, man, I, 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 um, I. I ignored it. I walked away from it. I tried to do other things, and God would just keep bringing me back. I would just keep bringing me back to it. Just keep bringing me to it. Run from it, and just keep going back to it. And finally, and I want to say, um, 2013 was when I really accepted the call. Mm. But I really said, you know what? I, I know I'm a pastor. I know. It. I didn't act like I didn't move out and do you know, but. I really accepted, um, but it wasn't until uh, I want to say like two years after that where I just actually mustered up the faith and the courage to say, you know what, I gotta stand on this and I don't know how to do it. Mm. And, I, and it wasn't an easy journey, bro. It, it wasn't an easy journey, but here I am. Yeah. So you say so? What so? Can you give us the audience like a sense of what a pastor goes through? Because like it's a lot. I know a lot of times we see the the suits and the face of passion, but a lot of people don't see the behind the scenes when the cameras are not off and on. Like what what is your day to day like as a pastor? Yeah, I know you gotta carry it every day, and we maybe you don't have to wear the suit, but you carry that everywhere you go. So like, what is that like? I know, like. I think the in all right, so this question is fast, you know what I mean? I'm trying to find <laughs> a good way to attack it. So a, a day to day for a pet, all right, so 
what people don't see with passer, right? They just see Sunday. Right, right. you see Sunday. Yeah, right, right. All right. So, first of all, I I think what what pastors start to realize is I'm not the pastor of the world. I'm the pastor of Elise Church. You, you know what I mean? Right, I right. had to accept that. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, this is what God is calling me to do. I had to first understand my assignment as a pastor. Uh, and my assignment as a pastor is shepherding, right? You know what I mean? Who God calls to me. My mm-hmm. sheep know my voice. So, mm-hmm. who God calls to me. So, in that shepherding, I have to understand, I had to figure out how to deal with people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, like like going into it, you, you think I think most people think pastor is evangelizing. Okay. That we're we're going in, preach a good, study a good word, preach a good message. See you here next week. Okay. That's not it. It's not okay. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Right, right. Because now I, I'm not preaching to make you feel good. I'm preaching to move you in a mm-hmm. certain direction, mm-hmm. move you where you you're supposed to be. So now as a pastor. The difference between a pastor and an evangelist, even though they look alike and they align sometimes, is I gotta help the sheep, or I hate to use the people as sheep, but Jesus did it, like, the, because I'm actually a sheep too, so I don't wanna use that as a defensive term. Like, mm-hmm. If God calling people to me, right, mm-hmm. into the church, follow me as I follow Christ, um, you're, you're gifted, obviously, right? You know what I mean? You got a lot of things going on. But if you're called to me, I have to figure out, you know, not figure out, but I have to be spirit-led right. to uh, help you reach your full potential in God mm. and your full understanding in God, understanding your full capabilities in God, um, understanding uh, the doctrine, the sound doctrine of God. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It, it's it's so much more than just preaching a feel good message or what they're doing a lot of times now is what the evangelists are doing now is preaching motivational motivational speeches motivational faith you know what I mean I gotta get down and tell people the hard thing what they don't want to hear mm. or you gotta stop sinning right you gotta yeah stop having this you gotta stop doing this right right you gotta do this like so now where a lot of pastors has shied away from because they don't like the negativity of what those things bring. But I have to deal with the spirit or the different spirits that's attacking my house mm. because that's what a true shepherd does. I have to protect you from the what? The wolves. Mm. You know what I mean? That's the difference between a shepherd and a harem. You know mm. what I mean? The harem is only out to save themselves. It's only out for themselves. But a true shepherd one that writes at the gate, at the door that's with the sheep, that goes into the fold. They protecting them. They put their life on the line. Mm-hmm. They covering them. They keeping them. You know what I mean? And I think the day to day with that is, it's it's so hard to because you got some people you can be a little harder with. Right. You can be a little pushy with. You got some people you can't be as hard with, and you gotta. You know what I mean? It's just learning. All of it is for real, for real, is being spirit led, mm. staying prayed up, staying in the word. Um, you know what I mean, and being able to kind of um, pulling or or leading in the correct way. It's not easy. It's so hard. Uh, at times, it's so difficult um, to get people to to see. Um, but one thing. Um, you know, one story that always sticks out to me, man, when I get into those places, it's Moses. When God said, I didn't tell you to hit the rock, I just told you to speak to it. Mm. And the more I understand that term, um, it, it really it really brings light to my uh, to my, my walk on a day-to-day basis. Right, amen. It's, it's, it's about Moses. Um, me and my wife saw the play Moses last week. Oh, nice. Um, John Graves, and um, there was a... Um, Downtown, so we saw it. Yes. It, it was really good. It was really good. Yeah. So, so um, when you started pastoring, when you started start pastoring. Did you have a network of people, other pastors you go to for? Oh wow. Okay. I didn't. So so. <laughs> so wow. let me say no. Let me say yes and no. Right. Okay. Um, I come from a family of preachers. Okay. I come from a family of preachers, but um, I'm. 
I'm blessed to have them. However, I think when you're really talking about um, growth, um, it's best to be able to go with um, people that that you're unfamiliar with, you're not so familiar with. Not to minimize them. I think they're awesome men and women of God. I'm not minimizing nobody because I don't want this interview to turn left and like, hey, I ain't had nobody. I did this all by myself mm-hmm. to me and God. That's not true. Um, I don't want to say it in that light. But the light that I'm saying it in is um, I didn't have an outside network of people um, where you can say, you know, this pass over here, this pass is successful over here, this pass is over like, God kind of kept me away from that. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. And even sometimes to this day, I'm like, man, I need um, someone else. You know what I mean? Because everyone else that I have around me is more so family. We're familiar. Uh, this is Reese. You know what I mean? Oh, this is, mm-hmm. it's a ranking thing, you know. But it's not, it's not more so on that equal term. Like, right. like, we can just talk and bust things up with, you know. And I have that with my family. But it's, 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 if you know, you know. Let me just leave it at that. I'm not going to try to explain it. But, so I did not have a network of outside pastors to, to help me with the process. Mm. You know, and my uncle, thank God for him um, to help me, you know what I mean, just mm. to be there for me as a friend, um, as a, uh, just, just always being there for me uh, to talk to. But other than the outside network, no, I did not have that at all. Mm. Uh, didn't, didn't have the structure, didn't have, you know, what, what, you know, no one would tell you what it is. It was just like, when I was in the game, they was just like, yo, just get it out, figure it out. Mm. I was just like, dang, that's how it is? Like, this is a competition? I said, oh, okay, yeah, you know. And I accepted the call, man. I just, God it kept me from it. Um, the amazing thing was when I actually said it, I said, you know what, I'm starting this church. It took me two years to actually open the doors mm. of the church. Um, it took two years, 17, 2017 was when we actually opened the church. I was ready in 2015, I had everything right. You know, it was the first time in my life where I had every, I was on top of everything, financially, uh, um, spiritually, uh, marriage was in the right place. Um, just everything was just, was good. I was ready, I was like, God, I'm ready. Mm. And I went to go look for space, I went to go look for building. It's like, nah, I don't want a church here. I don't want a church here. I don't want a church this. I don't want a church here. I got a kind, got at least one day, a guy said, yo, we found a nice place up in Allen. He said, we got a spot for you right here. And I'm going to send you over the lease. I said, okay, send the lease over. He sent over the lease, and they called me right here. Oh, we got we to gotta retract that lease from you. Mm. I said, I said, why? Wow, what happened? The people that the people that was there that was leaving, they want to stay now. They found out the church was coming and they want to stay now. Oh wow! I said okay, so I I prayed to God. I said Lord, if I'm wrong about your call for my life, I'll turn around right now. Like if I'm doing this wrong because it's like every door around me is closed. Like, mm. I said every time I go to do something, a door is closed, right? So, so I said, Lord, if I'm wrong, I'll go back to my own church and I'll sit there and I'll serve whatever you want me to do. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you. But if I'm wrong on hearing what you call, on your call for my life, turn me back around. And as I was in prayer that night, the Lord said, how can you be upset but answer prayer? And I'm thinking and I'm like, Wow, it hit me. Every place that, let me give me chills. Every place before I went to meet with the people, to look at the space, I prayed to God before I went in there. Lord, is this the space you want me to build in? Is this where you want me to go? If it ain't you, turn it down. Like, like, well, make sure it don't happen, don't work. Every place I went to. I got rejected for two years. Mm. Wasn't there. Nope, I ain't there. The Lord said, you clearly told me if it's not the place to reject me, and that's what I did, and you upset, I said, oh, thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. 
Mm. And every so often, he would just send people my way. And it was just like, before I had a building, man, I had so many people calling me. I had so many people. I was still pastoring with a building. Mm. People was calling. I, uh, one of my buddies, he, uh, one, of, uh, one of the guys from the church, he said, he called me up on a Saturday. I was low, man. He said, he said, yo, um, he said, where you at? I said, I was at my son football. I'm at my son football game. He said, which way are you taking back home? I said, I'll come down 422. He said, yeah, meet me at the Wawa at 422. Um, I, got, I just want to hand something to you. Mm. I said, okay. I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know what he was talking about. I pulled in the Wawa. And he said, he looked at me. He said, the Lord told me to give you this, my brother. I said, me? <laughs> he said, yeah, man. He said, man. He, he said, keep, keep moving. And I said, I said, all right. I, I, I took it. I didn't know what it was. Oh, and yeah, I didn't open it. You know. I, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know what it was. I just took it. It, 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 it was this guy I'm familiar with him. I know him. Right. I worked at the job with. You know what I mean? At this time, we was just like, we was just like, we wasn't as tight. Now, we tight now. But at that time, it was just like, um, he was just buddy at the job. Like, yeah. you know, just, hey, what's going on, right? So I just took it. I'm like, you can't get me. It's like a little bit, like, it looked like a little bit over the car. Okay. Right, right, right. right. So I get home, um, and he don't know. I'm just in, in my whole process discouraged, like trying to figure out this church thing. People, you know what I mean? I'm talking to so many people. They're like, yeah, you're a pastor, but you ain't got no church now, brother. Like, what's going on? So I go home, and I open the envelope. I want to say it was almost $2,000 in the envelope. Wow. And the message is like, you're, you know, the Lord told me to give you this. Pastor. Mm. And I said, you don't know what me and God just been mm. talking about dealing right. with. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so uh, it, it, God will always send like, like little things like that your way to remind you that you are on the right path. The journey is never easy, man. Like, you know what I mean? I thought everything, I thought I had everything lined up. I thought I had my credit right. I thought I had this, and that wasn't even a process. And I was just like, Lord, I don't want to go to be a pastor, and my financial state is where it is. You know what I mean? I was so far in debt, but within four months, I was I was out of debt completely. Four mm. months. August, I said a prayer. I said, Lord, I need to be out of debt before you want me to do this. By January, I was out of debt. Mm. It would just seem like, well, here, the extra this, extra that. And I just kept paying it, just kept paying it. Four months, out of debt completely. I had everything lined up right. I thought I had everything lined up. And the Lord said, it ain't gonna happen like that. Not by power, but by might, but by, by my spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanna encourage anyone that is on a journey for God. The road is never easy. In fact, I know we got this idea that in our mindset that if I pray, if I read the scriptures, if I go to church every day, if I give my offering, if I do all, if I check all the Christian and religious boxes, that everything is going to work out in my favor. But I'm here to tell you that it's not true. Mm. Peter said it is best that we suffer from doing good than to doing evil. You know what I mean? We leave a mark in the suffering of God. That's why he said, join in and take pleasure in the suffering of God. Whatever that God is calling you on and calling you to in, in, in the journey that you're walking into, it comes with the suffering. Mm. And if you're really called and you're truly called, it's not going to work the way you think it's going to work. Right. The devil, the enemy, is going to find every reason to hinder you, to stop you, to keep you from walking in the path or the direction that God wants you to walk. And I'm seeing that in every experience of my life. Like, I'm seeing that a lot. Like, the more I suffer, even this season of my life right now is like one of the worst seasons I've been through in a while. But the more I suffered, the more the church grew. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm suffering and suffered personally, but the church is growing. Like, and I'm like, God is breaking me. God is is pushing me and moving me. 
but the church continues to grow. Mm. New building, new this, new new that, new relationships, new new. It, it, it just the more I suffer personally, the church grew. Now I know everybody's saying, "Well, I ain't no pastor. I don't want to suffer personally." This and third, I get that too. But there's a suffering, um, which isn't really a suffering. It, it's a suffering, but it's not a suffering. You, you know what I mean? It's mm. it's a breaking. Mm. It's a it's a it's a breaking the body like 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 pain hurt suffering is is only connected via the flesh right um, so you, when you look at Luke you know Luke he says nothing by any means shall hurt you but then you you, you, you think about it you like that but I get hurt like you know what I mean things hurt me at times the problem is the reason why it's hurt is because we're still so attached. <laughs> to the flesh and it's so hard for us to break the bondages of the flesh and what we want and what we're trying to control and what we desire and what we want to have and what we want to you know what we to do so when that breaking comes it becomes it becomes hurtful because your pride is hurt your pride is being broken this is man you know your money getting funny and you're losing all control right because we're afraid to just completely let go. Mm -hmm. So because we we resisting the breaking, it becomes a suffering because we're resisting the move of God. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like that force, and we're resisting that force, and it begins to hurt, and we begin to worry, and we begin to doubt, and we begin to get anxiety, and we get to get fearful, and we begin to get you know impatient, and we get to get stressed and frustrated and all of these different things, right. and that doesn't feel good. But when we just let go and just break, it becomes a little more easy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you start to notice the Garden of Gethsemane. You know what I mean? When Jesus was, uh, Luke said he was, he was what, uh, uh, like crying as anguish was the blood was coming out, and so you could understand the pain. Mm -hmm. But when he accepted it, and as he was beaten, even though it hurt, you didn't hear his cry like, "Oh, this hurt." You don't read that description. You don't read when he was whipping them, when they were spitting on them, they were throwing rocks at him. Ow, ow. You don't hear that. No, you, don't. you can see, you look at like, man, you, as you read it, like, this had to hurt him. This had. But he walked it, carried it. You know what I mean? Before you heard, Lord, let it go, let, let it be another way. Mm -hmm. let, let, look, find a different way out. Let me go, go another way. But as he as he begins to break and say, you know what, I'm coming to terms with whatever you're doing. You don't read that, I'll, in fact, when we read, by his stripes, I'm healed. Right. I'm chastised. Yeah, for his chastisement was the shape of it. You know what I mean? It was for my iniquity. Like, like that's what we read. He was bruised for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. It, it, I know I messed that scripture up, but, but, <laughs> but, right. but you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, it, 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 it's a suffering, but it's not a suffering once once you learn how to let it go. There you go. Yeah, and that's, let me not preach. I don't want to be on preaching. Yeah, yeah that, that you mentioned about worry, and anxiety, and doubt. This led to your first book. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm worryless. So, what made you start writing that? Basically, oh, oh man, uh, I was going through right around the time where worst season of my life, where, you know, financially in terms of like I made some bad investments. Mm. I made some bad investments. And some uh, equipment, some things that I thought was uh, I needed at the time. I made some bad investments, right? And at the time of this investment, I was like, oh, this investment gotta work, gotta work, gotta work, gotta work, right? And I'm dumping money, I'm dumping, I'm just dumping money on this investment, like going crazy, like taking all my money out of my business and just dumping it in there. Mm. And I'm, it wasn't looking good, you know what I mean? Now, this is, this is. Personal stuff, like you know what I mean. This ain't nothing with the church, you know. This was me, my business, investing in something over here, right? And I was praying, like God, make that work. I gotta make this work. I gotta make this work. And I said, How you gonna worry and have faith at the same time? Mm. How does that even work? And I thought about that. And I'm like, I'm sitting here, like, full of worry. 
I started writing down all the things that I'm worried about. I'm worried about my kids. I'm, I'm worried about my marriage. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about uh, uh, my finances. I'm worried about my family. I'm, I'm worried about my, my cousins, my brothers, my sisters, my nephews, my nieces. You know, I, I'm, I'm just full of worry. And here I am preaching every Sunday. Mm. Mm. Full of worry. Mm. So that's what led to that. Um, to me writing that book, I had to eradicate the worry from my life. Um, and it was something that uh, it, it, it was hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's not to say that worry doesn't come back and all of this type of thing, you know. Worry tries me. I just don't operate it anymore. I try not to operate it anymore. I try to cast worry out of my life. Mm -hmm. Every area, every regard, every step of the way is really something that most people um, we take. I think we have adopted to worry as if um, worry is normal. Mm. Normalize worry. Right. Mm. Normalize it. In order for me to show that I care for you, I got to show you that I'm worried Worry. about you. Right. And that's just another thing that the streets lie to. Us right. And it's funny, um, um, quick testimony. I actually, well, I got your book. I actually started reading your book. Oh, nice. Yeah, I nice. did finish it. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, um, you gave me to finish it. Yes, um, I'm going to finish it next week. So I'm going to finish it next week. Um, so I was actually going for something my job. Um, so my job had this, um, you know, it's, it get in reviews yes. for performance, you know. And um, it was around, I think, two weeks, two weeks ago. And um, and I know my, I knew my, I my one was coming. I know it was coming. And I suppose it was probably this one date. Um, I went around. I, asked, I think I asked you for prayer. Pray for me. I was, I was, I was yes. freaking out. I was freaking out. And then the next day, Wednesday comes. I actually got a date with Thursday, blah, blah, blah. Thursday at 10 a.m. That, the, usually Wednesdays, I, I usually listen to, like, a Russell Dog program by a brother. But God told me to put on gospel that whole night. Yeah. yeah I put on gospel the whole night. Like, Kurt Frighten and Fred Hammond. It was like. You were old school. Old school, yeah. yeah so, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, I, and, um, at, and my start, I actually, I actually, I was, I was in tears. I was in tears. They look, God, I don't know what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And I just came out to God. I started crying. I, didn't, God, I ain't going downstairs for my wife until no. like around like 11 something. She was doing some work. And um, and then the first they came, I was like, okay, I don't know. okay, whatever happens, happens. Get there, see my boss <laughs> on time. I'm so freaking out. I'm freaking out. I was nervous. I was anxiety. I was nervous. And um, he told me, first thing he said was, first of all, you're not getting fired. I broke down and cried. Uh, I broke down and cried right in front of me. I was like literally weeping because I fought all the stuff I went through that whole year yes. and all the stuff I made mistakes on. And I was like, oh, wait, thinking it. I was like, I was literally crying. Like, I was weeping. Like, because it was a it was a lot. It was a, it was a lot. So, yeah, I went to the bathroom and cleaned up, whatever. Um, went up, cleaned up, you know, talking about, we talked about it. And um, because, like, I, I never reaped out there before. I've reaped before I was younger, but I never reaped like that ever. Like, because I was like literally crying. I, I better, I thought I was very proud. Never asked people, hey, pay for me. I never want those people right. to ask, you know, you know, I, you know, but that night God told me this stuff. We asked people to pay. Like, cause I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, I just asked me, yo, I, I knew, I always asked people that I knew had strong relationships with yeah. God, that had faith. Like, I think, you know, Pray for me. I know you look. I don't know. I ain't, I ain't give more details. Like, let's pray for me. Yeah. yeah you know, so. I don't even need that. Well, I, yeah, let's pray. And, and, and the response I got from people was like, I'm done. I was like, okay, they did it. I was like, I told people what happened. They were happy for me. Like, yeah, cause I was like, really, like, you know, then I'm, it was like this whole weight was on my shoulders. It was like, so now I'm like, I'm trying to live this worry now. So, like, now I'm trying to. Delegate some things for my business, so like right. make some moves. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, to get me to a less level. You know what I mean? So, you know, so I'm trusting God. I'm not gonna worry. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna like get God, give me the right people to go and do it, and then 
I didn't trust I didn't trust them because I had trust issues, you know what I mean, with people, certain people. And now I think I have the right people now to take this business to the next level. So not not this but my nonprofit does right. level. So, you know, so but your book really did inspire me on um, the uh, worry and all that. That's my that's my goal this summer to not worry at all this summer. <laughs> like, at all. Like, saying, because I know it's going to be a lot with um, new members and different environment, being with different schools. So I'm not going to, like, I'm going to try to speak positive all summer. I'm going to try to, like, I'm going to try to have less worry this summer. I'm going to say, look, I'm going to do this. Show my boss that I, I can't do the job, you know, and, um, you know, and you're going to go from there, you know, because I'm not going to let nothing hinder my faith in this moment because I, yeah. that, 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 that whole year was a big test for me in terms of like dealing with adversity not being fully stabbed the whole year yeah. like you know just different things and not ask for help you know yeah. so like so now it's like okay I'm taking a while to learn and just what I did do ain't gonna do it this summer so like so now so like now I'm trusting my business to people that I worked with for years. I used to be with my business doing workshop for the first summer. I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be there at all. <laughs> all right? I'm going to trust you to lead these sessions and do what you got to do. I know you get to these errors, but do what you do and this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to like, you know, let's go from there. But like I said, but I'm proud that that uh, we need to work relaxed because a lot of times we worry about a lot of things and, and it hinders your spirit. Like you said, you can't, that's like you said earlier. How are you gonna be a man of faith and worry at the same time? You get, it doesn't. You can't, can't. You can't be high or cold. You gotta be one or the other. Right. So and um, you know. So um, so and one more question. Or two more questions. I know we don't like lot over time, but um, how do you manage pastoring and being a husband and being a father? How's that balance work? I know it's a lot. Like great, great. My wife is first. She has to be. Mm -hmm. um, she has to be first. I can't. I, in order for me to be a, a good pastor, or the pastor that God wants me to be, I have to first be a good husband. Because mm -hmm. um, we are a unit. It's not her. It's not me. It's we. You know what I mean? Right. Um, one of the things that help me manage, and I think. I'm going to answer this in two parts. Is mm -hmm. that okay? Yeah. I'm going to answer this in two parts. Um, my first ministry, they always say, is, 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 is home, right? Right. So when, you, when you're looking at this, um, I think the idea of marriage had to, when we, when we identify what is marriage, right? You know, it's not, man didn't come up with the idea of marriage. God did, right? So we got to make sure we, we understand and mm -hmm. we're teaching people what marriage is supposed to look like. Um, marriage isn't supposed to look like I do this, I do this, and she does this, and she does this, because we're, we're separated, we're divided. Marriage is supposed to look like oneness. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Jesus said, you see me, you see the Father. Like, you know, so that's the idea of with me and my wife. That's what we work on. That's the relationship that we go on. Not just as a team. We're not a team, we're one. You know what I mean? I think that needs to be driven in marriages today because I believe that Christian marriages go through more divorces mm. than the worldly marriages out here, right? Mm. So we have to understand that marriage is a God thing. It is the it is the natural manifestation of what God is doing in us being a spirit. You know what I mean? But in our marriage, it's the natural. So if I'm a mean husband, if I'm this, if I'm that, and that's how I am in the spirit. How I treat my wife is how I, you know what I mean, is how my relationship is with God. It's, it's, that's just basically how it is, right? So, balancing that, there is no balance in that, right? But how to balance on the other side of it is the attention, if, you know what I mean? Uh, making sure I'm well-rounded because I gotta be a husband, I gotta be a father, I gotta be a pastor, I gotta be a friend to my wife. We gotta talk, we gotta have conversation, we gotta, you know what I mean, to make sure that we are on one accord. It mm. just doesn't happen. Right. This thing, it has to be worked on. 
And I think that a lot of times that people feel like, oh, we got, well, we we in a relationship is good, we straight, you know what's up, and we go on, we do all these different tasks. No, in order to stay as a healthy relationship, we got to talk. I had to learn how to be vulnerable with my wife. Mm. As a man, like, coming from the streets to not, to not allow people, like you said, we had trust issues. Um, I had trust issues and nobody, you know, and I just wouldn't let people get close to me to burn me. It wasn't even that I got burnt. I had, you know, like people who were hurt you. It was just the fact that I don't want to let more people close to me so they can hurt me. Mm -hmm. So when you dealing with that your whole life, especially with women, I was like, I will never let a woman hurt me. You know what I mean? I brought that spirit into my marriage. So this is why, you know, you, you got to be, you know, I tell these young people when they get married, you know, you got to have these things more in mind so you can go in the right way. But, go to there, I learned I had to be vulnerable with my wife. Mm -hmm. I had to be able to take the armor off. I had to be able to tell you things that sometimes you may not like. You know what I mean? So that we can grow. I'm not saying that if I tell you this, that I'm right. But I need you to pray. I need you to do this. I, I gotta show you my fears. I gotta show you my struggles. In order for us to be one, one I gotta show you my struggles. I gotta show you my fears. I gotta show you the things that I'm dealing with, the things that I'm going through, the things that, uh, you know what I mean, the things that's on my mind, and vice versa. You gotta show me, you gotta do the same thing. Because if we don't, we will never become one. So that's a hard thing right there. That's, that was hard. But now it's it gets easier as the years go on. Right. You know what I mean? It's easy. And I think we're coming up on ten years. Well, so congratulations. Easy. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So it gets very easy um, as it goes on. Um, but she understands the call. So now that we're one, now that she understands the assignment, she understands, you know, it's just no fight with it. You know what I mean? Like I'm preaching, if I'm doing this, da 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 da, -da shit. She know what she got to do for me to be able to do what I have to do, mm -hmm. and vice versa. I know what I got to do so that you can do because we know each other's call. I got the call. Our calls, our calls are, are connected. Right. So this little fight. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, with us, of course, marriage ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. and, no, far from it. I don't want a perfect marriage. Right. Because right. Because what is it? It's not, it, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. exist. <laughs> it, it, it is your idea of what perfect is. Right. It is, a, it is a place, my marriage can never go to a place of arrival. We're always grow, growing. Always growing, We're right. Always evolving. Yeah, you know what I mean? right. So, you know, I, I just look each and every day of how I'm going to be a better husband. Mm -hmm. Right. How I'm going to be a better husband. Every day. What I got to do. What I got to deny in myself. I learned a long time ago. I stopped trying to change my wife. I changed me. Mm. You know what I mean? I started changing me. I started changing. I started letting go of pride. That's the number one killer of all of us. Got to get rid of that pride. The Bible says, uh, God resists the proud. You got any ounce of pride in your life? The Bible says in the book of James that God resists you. There's no pride can dwell in the presence of God. I'm talking about in any area of your life, no small, little, or low. Pride will remove you from the spirit of God. Mm. And I had to use that in my marriage. Mm. I, had to, I had to figure out, I don't have to show my wife I'm the man of the house. She already conceded to that. Mm. So I had to take my pride out of that. You know what I mean? I had to take my pride out of how I talk. You know what I mean? My frustration when I get upset. Like, so, you know, I had to, I, had to I had to be wrong, even when I thought I was right. right. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I had to do a lot. It was a lot of adjustment. Got I me mean, like, yo, honestly, being married, I'm, being married, um, made me a completely better man. It it taught me even even salvation, even in my salvation. Like salvation fixes everything. Right? Mm -hmm. Like true salvation fixes everything. Right, right. It just helped me even be a better Christian. It did. It literally helped me be a better Christian. So it, it's, I love my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, amen. Get on my nerves, but I love my life. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yes. Um, she's going to get me when she sees this. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> yeah. So, so where people can find you more information about you, your book, your church, where people can find you at? Oh man, I'm all over social media, man. I, I, I have, I'm not, look, um, I'm on social media. I have been, this last couple of weeks, I have been really bad with social media. Please forgive me. Um, cause I got so much going on. I'm not as good as you, Levine, with all this stuff, <laughs> technology and being able to do it. Consistent with social media, I'm more of a person to person type of thing, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? But you can always come and get with me on Sundays at Release Church. Um, if you're in the area, 691 uh, West Germantown Pike, Plymouth Meet in PA. We're there every Sunday at 11 o'clock. Uh, Instagram, uh, Pastor Reese on Instagram, uh, Release Church is on Instagram as well. Facebook under Release Church. Uh, Maurice Bowser on Instagram. I'm, I'm all over the social media thing. I'm not as privy as everyone else, and I try to stay up to date with it um, and as much as I can. My book is on Amazon, Worry Less. I'm Pastor Maurice Bowser. You can um, go on Amazon and get an e-copy or get a hard, um, or a cover or a book, an actual book. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm out here. I'm, 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 I'm around. I'm around. I'm around. I'm not too hard to find. Not too hard to find. All right. So what's, what do you got coming up? Anything coming up? I have nothing coming up. Um, no big, nothing oh, big okay. coming up as of yet. Um, right now, uh, we still transitioning into the new building. Gotcha. Uh, we've been there almost a month, month mm. and a half now. Uh, we just lining up some things with that. Looking to get into, uh, we're starting to start Bible study in. Uh, Bible study on Wednesdays and prayers on Monday. Things like that, just you know, just implement more things in, as we grow. Um, we, we're not a huge church, right, right, right. Um, but we're a growing church, and uh, we ain't small. We, ain't, we wouldn't be considered small, but we're we're not we're not a huge we're not a huge church, and uh, but we're a growing church, and um, we just we're being spirit led, man. God is watering our steps. Yes, and two two more questions. Um, no, no um, what do you do for self care? In terms, in terms, like we you you do a lot. So what do you do to self care to like replenish yourself? Yeah. All right. So self care for me is, um, I need I need prayer time. Mm. I need downtime. I need downtime. I have to have it. Uh, especially me. Um, I think this is a tough question because. I think where I'm at now, um, sometimes you get a lot of pulling. Right, yeah. A lot of people pulling. And every once in a while, you want to do the pulling. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of doing the, the pouring. So, what I have to do is, my downtime is I need God. Mm. That's who I pour for. That's my source. And um, so, what I do is, I, I just. I, I, I take breaks, social media breaks. I took a three week social media break. I ain't been on, no preaching on there, no nothing, no no messages. It drives me crazy because I get everybody, hey, Pastor, when you gonna be back on? When you gonna be back on? I'm gonna try to get on tonight. But God, he shuts me down on that on that front. And I have to take those times to shut down, to replenish myself, to restore my soul, to restore my spirit, you know what I mean? So I have to, I have to pray, I have to fast. Fasting, it's just, it's, you have to fast. You have to do it. Um, I know there's something that doesn't, you know, people don't like to fast. You have to. Uh, you know what I mean? Even if I had someone that I could pull from, you know, like, or, you know, if I pull from you, I pull from you, I pull from you, eventually it's not going to be enough. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, you got to fast. The only one that's going to be enough is when you pull from God. Fasting, prayer, and just that um, that space to just to hear what what am I dealing with, what I'm facing. It's part of the battle is it's not how well we can fight, it's how we prepare for who we have to fight because the only thing I'm fighting is my faith. Mm -hmm. So all God asks me to fight is faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Right. My enemies, my or I don't want to say my enemies is people, but the spirit, the enemy is the spirit against me. God got that. Mm. 
I just gotta say, as long as I know where, if I gotta go, th- if I gotta go this way, I'm going that way. I don't care who's in front of me. I'm going that way. And if it, if it, if it draws out a fight, my angels got me. The Lord got me. The Spirit of God got me. So that's my self care: prayer, fasting, and uh, washing in the Word of God. Mm. All right. And what advice would you give to the younger Maurice? Woo, man. Woo. <laughs> the advice, the, my main advice that I would give to the younger Maurice is believe in yourself. Look, let me rephrase that. Believe in the God. Believe in the God that's in you. Uh, I suffered from, I think I suffered from identity crisis at times. Um, I thought I had to be what everybody wanted me to be. Mm. You know, um, there's a lot of pressure on that. And I think that's, you know, that's a, that's a struggle for, for a lot of men um, that's out here. Feel that we gotta be who everybody wants to be. If I need you, I gotta be, you know what I mean? We on the streets, I gotta be a thug, I gotta be a shooter, I gotta be this, I gotta be this, I gotta be this guy, I gotta, you know, I can't, you know, I was just trusting you, you know what I mean? The God in you, trusting the God in you. Um, don't be afraid to be yourself. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Uh, don't seek the affirmation for others and then realize later that you were right all along and now they come along, you know what I mean? Like, right. you never been in that situation yeah. where you was afraid to do something or be who God called you to be because every, well, everybody was, was thinking or thought about it at the time and everybody was down in it and then a couple months later in line you see them same people doing it, mm. you know? So I, I, I would say that, you know, to my younger son, just don't be afraid, don't be afraid to be the man God called you to be. Whatever it looks like, whatever it seems like, just be true to who God called to you to be. All right. Wow. Um, but we has been an honor and pleasure to have you as a guest on the show. Um, get some gems and wisdom, you know. Hope those who are watching will watch this and be inspired to get on their journey. Um, again, I want you to have your Father's Day to you. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your time. You know, just enjoy the moment. You know, enjoy the moment. And just um, thank you for just being on the show. I appreciate it. Hope we, hope we come back on. You know, oh, well, yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. So for those who are watching, thank you for joining us. You will see the replay on, on pages. Um, just have a good weekend and be safe.